This is the year I learned how to read. This year I get to use an iPad. This is the year I start middle school. This year I'm a freshman. This year I get a drive. Matt, this is the year. We finally made it. Psst, so surreal. Seniors. My one chance to inspire. This is the year to help students reach for the impossible. This year, we help young people believe in themselves and redefine what is possible. We change lives. This is the year. Right now there is a kindergarten teacher perusing the aisles of Target. Even though he still has two more weeks of summer break, he is already dreaming up ways to make his students feel welcome. His classroom will be a refuge. For a few kids, it may be the only place where they feel truly safe because of a teacher. There's a language arts teacher who will take a week and give up her lunch period, those blessed 26 minutes to scarf down a meal, in order to help a student learn how to read. And although the progress is slow, this boy will become a reader because of a teacher. There's a math teacher who will have a room full of kids who claim that they're just not good at math. By the end of the year, his kids will be geeking out over ways to solve complex problems. They'll see that math can be creative and even fun, and they will become problem solvers because of a teacher. There's a science teacher who will inspire her students to chase after questions, and one afternoon they'll be so excited about their experiments that they won't even notice the bell ring and they will become scientists because of a teacher. There are history teachers who will inspire students to record history, and a group of PE teachers who will encourage kids to get more active. There are technology teachers who will help students send their work to the world, and fine art teachers who will get kids to find their creative voice. There are foreign language teachers who will help kids communicate globally. And there are CTE teachers preparing students for all kinds of jobs. And there's this teacher librarian who will see the students as children and not data. He's creating a makerspace while also inspiring kids to fall in love with reading. And they will become lifelong learners because of a teacher. And right now, there's a fourth grade teacher with a scribbled up yellow legal pad. She's dreaming up wild new projects, and even though she jokes about not wanting to go back to school, she is secretly excited about meeting her new group of students. This is her 27th year, and she's still taking creative risks. To her, it's no big deal. It's what she does. But it's a big deal to her students. To them, she is a hero, and this year she will make her students' world epic, like she always does. 
they will remember her forever, and she will change the world in ways that she cannot even fathom. And all of this will happen because of a teacher. I was sitting on an airplane and the nice talkative man in the middle seat, if I think someone is talkative, oh my God, they're so talkative. And he's telling me where he's going and what he's doing and what his business is. And he says, so what do you do, darling? And I said, well, I'm a teacher and now I work with the National Education Association. And he stopped smiling. And he said, I've heard about you people. He said, I hear you need this, and then I hear you need that, and then I hear you need something else. And to tell you the truth, darling, I'm getting tired of hearing it. I'm a businessman. I want you to bottom line it for me. I want you to tell me right now, what is the one single thing that would solve all of our problems in public schools? And I said, that's easy. What we really need are fewer people who think there's one single thing that would solve all of our problems in public schools. And you know, I wish I hadn't been so snotty to that guy, but it was fun. And here's the thing, he's not the enemy. Most people, their kids are grown and gone or they never had kids, they don't walk into a neighborhood public school. I'm an educator. It's up to me to educate the man in the middle seat as much as to educate a politician about what happens in any given typical school on any given typical day. I mean, we serve kids a hot meal. We put band-aids on boo-boos. We diversify our curriculum instruction to meet the personal and individual needs of all of our students, the blind, the hearing impaired, the physically challenged, the gifted and talented, the chronically tarted, and the medically annoying. We make sure that they've had their immunizations, make sure they understand disease control, teach them to resist drugs, alcohol, tobacco. We give career counseling, pregnancy counseling, mental health counseling. We get them on the bus safely. We take them off the bus safely. We provide computer instruction, sex education. We stop bullying, teach them to say, I'm sorry, and mean it. We instill an understanding of civil rights, the political process, challenge racism, fo foster social tolerance and appreciation for our cultural and religious diversity. We teach the principles of free enterprise, how to be a good sport. We develop personal responsibility, practice bicycle safety, and check for head lice. We provide bilingual education, teach metrics, how to be a wise consumer, exercise weight control, how to drive a car. We teach the impact of wars, develop collaborative skills, how to tune a violin, how to use a reason and evidence to protect the future. We teach them to revere their environment, how to manage their money, how to access information, how to make wise choices, how to balance a checkbook. We teach loyalty to the ideals of a democracy. We build patriotism, good oral hygiene, a respect for the the worth and dignity of every individual. We nurture curiosity, encourage a good question, build self-esteem, and then we teach reading, writing, and arithmetic. He says the problem with teachers is what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided that his best option in life was to become a teacher? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. He reminds the other dinner guests that it's true what they say about teachers. Those who can, do. And those who can't, teach. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. I decide to bite my tongue instead of his and resist the urge to remind the other dinner guests that it's also true what they say about lawyers because we're eating after all and this is supposed to be polite conversation. I mean, you're a teacher, Taylor. Come on, be honest. What do you make? And I wish he hadn't done that. Asked me to be honest. Because you see, I've got this little policy in my classroom about honesty and butt-kicking, which is, if you ask for it, then I have to let you have it. <laughs> you want to know what I make? 
I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I can make a C plus feel like a Congressional Medal of Honor, and I can make an A minus feel like a slap in the face. How dare you waste my time with anything less than your very best. I make kids sit through 40 minutes of study hall in absolute no, you may not work in groups. No, you cannot ask me a question, so put your hand down. Why won't I let you go to the bathroom? Because you're bored and you don't really have to go to the bathroom, do you? I make parents tremble in fear when I call home at around dinner time. Hi, this is Mr. Molly. Hope I haven't called at a bad time. I just wanted to talk to you about something that your son said today in class. To the biggest bully in the grade, he said, hey, why don't you leave that kid alone? I still cry sometimes, don't you? And that was the noblest act of courage that I have ever seen. I make parents see their children for who they are and who they can be. You want to know what I make? I make kids wonder. I make them question. I make them criticize. I make them apologize and mean it. I make them write, 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 and then I make them read. I make them spell. Definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Define nightly B A U until they will never misspell either one of those words again. I make them show all their work in math class and then hide it on their final drafts in English. I make them realize that if you've got this, then you follow this. And if somebody ever tries to judge you based on what you make, you give them this. Here, let me break it down for you so you know what I say is true. Teachers, teachers make a difference. Now, what about you? The problem with teachers is, what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided his best option in life was to become a teacher? I mean, Taylor, you're a teacher, aren't you? Be honest. What do you make? You want to know what I make? I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I make a C plus feel like a Congressional Medal of Honor and an A minus feel like a slap in the face. How dare you waste my time with anything less than your very best. I make kids sit through 40 minutes of study hall in absolute silence. No, you may not work in groups. No, you cannot ask a question. Why won't I let you get a drink of water? Because you're not thirsty, you're bored, that's why. I make parents tremble in fear when I call home. I hope I haven't called at a bad time. I just wanted to talk to you about something Billy said today. Billy said, leave him alone. I still cry sometimes, don't you? And it was the noblest act of courage I had ever seen. I make parents see their kids for who they are and who they can be. You want to know what I make? I, I make, make kids, kids wonder. wonder. I make them question. I make them criticize. I make them apologize and mean it. I, I make, make them, them write, 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 and then I make them read. I make them spell definitely beautiful, definitely beautiful, definitely beautiful, over and over again until they never misspell either one of those words again. I make them show all their work in math and make them hide it on the final draft in English. I make them understand that if you've got this, and you follow this, and someone ever tries to judge you by what you make, you give them this. Let me break it down for you so you know what I say is true. I make a difference. I make a difference. How about you? Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good, strong jab. There! Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, 
Now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment. Well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn. Her dot! All framed in swirly gold. <laughs> I can make a better dot than that! She opened her never-before-used set of watercolors and set to work. A red dot, a purple dot, a yellow dot, a blue dot. Vashti painted and painted. The blue mixed with the yellow, and she discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting, lots of little dots in many colors. If I can make little dots, I bet I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's many dots made quite a splash. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle, and then she said, Sign it. The end. here and what really makes a difference. So at this time, without further ado, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker for this uh, back to school convocation, Dalton Sherman from Charles Rice Learning Center. Dallas ISD. 
Do you believe in my classmates? Do you believe that every single one of us can graduate ready for college or the workplace? You better, because next week we're all showing up in your schools. All 157,000 of us. And what we need from you is to believe that we can reach our highest potential. No matter where we come from, whether it's sunny South Dallas, whether it's Pleasant Grove, whether it's Oak Leaf, You better not, because as you know, in some cases, you're all we've got. You're the ones who feed us, who wipe our tears, who hold our hands, or hug us when we need it. You're the ones who love us, when sometimes it feels like no one else does. And when we need it the most, don't give up on my classmates. Do you believe in your colleagues? Do you? I hope so because they came to your school because they wanted to make a difference too. Believe in them, trust them, and lean on them when times get tough. <laughs> we all know we kids can sometimes make it tough. front office, whether you serve up meals in the cafeteria, my favorite, or help keep the halls clean, or whether you're a teacher or a principal, we need you. Please believe in your colleagues and they'll believe in you. Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe that what you're doing is shaping not just my generation, but that of my children and my children's children? There's probably easier ways to make a living, but I want to tell you on behalf of all the students in Dallas. We need you. We need you now more than ever. Believe in yourself. Finally, do you believe that every child in Dallas needs to be ready for college or the workplace? Do you believe that Dallas students can achieve? Gentlemen, we need you to know that 
Because what you're doing is the most important job in the city today. We need you to believe in us, in your colleagues, in yourselves, and in our goals. If you don't believe, well, I'm not going there. I want to thank you for what you do for me and for so many others. Do you believe in me? Because I believe in me and you've helped me get to where I am today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. around the whole thing. They all do you. Wow. My name is Megan Baumgars and I'm here to help you with your kids in your classrooms with a disability or without a disability. I am going to show you how to teach your students the right way. I am a special person. When I was in school, I made a lot of friends. I, I was in regular classes at the Pella for support. I learned with other students in regular classrooms. I became a cheerleader in high school. I was the first cheerleader in the state with Down syndrome. My cheerleading team went to state and we went on to nationals where we won our national sportsmanship award in Washington, D.C. Since I've been out of high school, I was a fashion model in a global Down syndrome foundation fashion show and I used to work at the Mile High down syndrome association where I help them with events. I now go to the bridge program in Highlands Ranch where I'm learning how to be a public speaker. I have a lot of skills. I have a lot of dreams. What I want to say is to you, don't limit me. Don't limit me by thinking that I can't learn in your classroom. Don't limit me by thinking that I will always need someone to help me. Don't limit me by having low expectations for me. Include me in all your students in your circle of learning while you are planning for my world-class education. Think about how I have the same needs as our students. We all need life skills. We all need work skills. I, I need for you to teach me skills beyond reading and math. Teach me how to learn. Teach me how to act. Think about what I need to know to be able to do when I leave school. Help me learn to be independent in class. Help me learn to be independent with friends. Help me learn to be independent and safe when you're around our school. Teach me to be independent so I can become an independent adult. I need to work independently. I need to speak up for myself. Don't limit me. By teaching me to depend on others. Teach me respect because respect is give and take. Hold me to the same behavior, expectations as others in your classroom. Teach me how to behave and excel in your class. Don't limit me by making me a class mascot. Teach me what you expect from me. 
set high expectations, not impossible expectations. There is a difference, you know. You will learn a lot from me. Good teachers teach and learn with their students. I will teach you a lot about yourself. I will teach your students about people with disabilities. If you don't limit me, we will teach our school how to be an inclusive community. You, my teacher, are the person who's going to teach me power, passion, love, and independent. And I will become a powerful, passionate, loving, and independent adult. So please don't limit me. My name is Megan Bongarts. Thank you for your time today. Have a wonderful new school year.
after being cut from his high school basketball team. He went home, locked himself in his room, and cried. He wasn't able to speak until he was almost four years old, and his teachers said he would never amount to much. Was demoted from her job as a news anchor because she wasn't fit for television. Fired from a newspaper for lacking imagination and having no original ideas. At age 11, he was cut from his team after being diagnosed with a growth hormone deficiency, which made him smaller in stature than most kids his age. At 30 years old, he was left devastated and depressed after being unceremoniously removed from the company he started. A high school dropout whose personal struggles with drugs and poverty culminated in an unsuccessful suicide attempt. A teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything and that he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Rejected by Decca Recording Studios, who said, we don't like their sound, they have no future in show business. His first book was rejected by 27 publishers. His fiance died, failed in business, had a nervous breakdown, and was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never tried anything new.